This video is about perfect encryption. Alice wants to send a message to Bob. It is highly important to the two of them that the contents of this message remain secret. However, since there are eavesdroppers around them, such as Eve, simply sending this message in plain text is not safe. Eve can easily read this message and find out any secret information. Ensuring that such a message remains secret is one of the oldest problems in cryptography. The solution is given by encryption schemes. Cryptography offers a variety of options for encrypting a message. Let's find out about one of the oldest schemes, known as the Caesar cipher. In this scheme, Alice and Bob have previously agreed on a key, which is a natural number sampled uniformly at random. In this video, we assume that no eavesdropper has access to this key. Let's assume that the key Alice and Bob share is the number 7. To encrypt her message secret, Alice takes the key and takes a look at the alphabet wheel. Alice rotates the outer wheel by seven positions counterclockwise. Now, she finds each letter on the inner wheel and writes down the corresponding letter from the outer wheel. So, for the letter S, Alice will write down Z, then for the letter E, she will write down the letter L, and so on. Then, the encryption, or the ciphertext, of the message secret is ZLJYLA. Alice can now send this ciphertext to Bob, who is going to decrypt it. When Bob receives the ciphertext, he takes the key, and, just like Alice, takes a look at the alphabet wheel. Bob rotates the outer wheel seven positions clockwise, to invert the encryption. Similarly, he finds each letter on the inner wheel, and writes down the corresponding letter from the outer wheel. This way, for the letter Z, Bob writes down S, for the letter L, he writes down E, and so on. Bob obtains the decrypted message secret, which is exactly the message sent by Alice. This encryption scheme is correct, meaning that Bob's decryption matches Alice's message. On the other hand, we are not sure if any security is guaranteed. Can Eve decrypt the message on her own without knowing the secret key 7? Pause the video for a minute and think about it. Eve has access to the ciphertext. Although this ciphertext may seem meaningless, Eve can easily break it. Note that a message encrypted with key 27 can be easily decrypted with key 1, and a message encrypted with key 28 can be easily decrypted with key 2. So, Eve can simply iterate through 26 keys and look at all the possible decryptions. As you can see, only one of the decryptions makes sense, namely the one given by the potential key 7, which is the real key. Hence, Eve has broken the Caesar cipher. The Caesar cipher does not offer perfect security. Achieving perfect security, also known as information theoretic security, means that Eve cannot obtain any information about the encrypted message from the cipher text, except possibly the length of the message. We would like that, given a cipher text, Eve cannot know if the encrypted message is secret, or cipher, or any other word of six letters. More formally, each message of length 6 should have the same probability of being encrypted to the given ciphertext. We can achieve perfect security by making a natural modification to the Caesar cipher. Instead of choosing a single number for shifting the alphabet, Alice and Bob can agree on a fixed length for the secret message, namely 6 in our example, and they can pick 6 numbers uniformly at random, one for each letter. Let's assume that these are 4, 1, 7, 5, 6, and 2. This encryption scheme is known as one-time pad. To encrypt the message secret, Alice applies the Caesar cipher encryption on each letter. But she uses the first number in the key for the first letter, the second number for the second letter, and so on. She obtains the cipher text W, F, J, W, K, V, and she sends it to Bob. When Bob receives the cipher text, he decrypts each letter using the Caesar cipher decryption. He uses the same keys as Alice, the first number in the key for the first letter, the second number for the second letter, and so on. Bob obtains the decrypted message secret, which is exactly the message sent by Alice. While the decryption is correct, we need to check whether Eve can obtain any information. Is she able to tell whether the encrypted message is cipher or secret just by having access to the plain text? Pause the video for a minute to think about it. As opposed to the case of the Caesar cipher, Eve would have to iterate through a large number of keys, namely 6 to the power of 26. 
the large key space is not the only advantage of the one-time pad encryption scheme. Even if Eve would iterate through the whole key space, she would still not be able to recover Alice's message. If the key is 417562, then the decrypted message is indeed secret. On the other hand, if the key was 20, 23, 20, 15, 6, 4, then the decrypted message would be a cipher. For any message of six letters, there exists a key that could decrypt the given ciphertext to that message. Hence, Eve obtains no information about the original message, except for its length, which means that the one-time pad encryption scheme achieves perfect security. In this video, you have learned about two well-known encryption schemes. The first one is the Caesar cipher, where each letter of the secret message is shifted by a secret number of positions. This scheme does not achieve perfect security, since the cipher text offers an adversary more information than the length of the message. On the other hand, shifting each letter by a different number of positions achieves perfect security, which leads us to the one-time pad encryption scheme. Thanks for watching this video.